Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, Dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque. Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz. Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod. Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the feast day of St. Andrew the Apostle of our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray in this Eucharist that we might become also fishers of men, participating in the mission of our Lord. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and, and on, on earth, earth peace to people, people of goodwill. Good we, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, you we glorify you, we, we give, give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, God heavenly King, King O God, God Almighty Father, Father Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ only, only begotten, begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, 
You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. We humbly implore your majesty, O Lord, that just as the blessed apostle Andrew was for your church a preacher and pastor, so he may be for us a constant intercessor before you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, No one who believes in him will be put to shame. There is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and reaching all who call upon him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how can they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone to preach? And how can people preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. But not everyone has heeded the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what was heard from us? Thus faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes through the word of Christ. But I ask, did they not hear? Certainly they did, for their voice has gone forth to all the earth and their words to the ends of the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold, sweeter also than syrup or honey from the comb. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Please stand. Come after me, says the Lord, and I will make you fishers of men. Alleluia, 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother, Andrew, casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. He said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. He walked along from there and saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. And uh, I thank you for coming today to the Manila Cathedral to celebrate with us this Eucharist. Today, we celebrate the feast of one of the twelve apostles, the brother of St. Peter, St. Andrew. And one of his titles is, in Greek, it is the protoclete, meaning the first one to be called by our Lord. As we have seen in our gospel passage today, his brother, Peter, they were the first ones to be called by Jesus. And they were called by Jesus in a special way because Jesus used an image or a title for them. In our gospel today, Jesus saw them. They were fishermen. But Jesus told them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. I know, my dear brothers and sisters, these words are familiar to many of us. In fact, we are very fond of this title, Fishers of Men. I remember when we were seminarians, we even saw a short movie entitled Fishers of Men. It is about the priests who follow Jesus. Sometimes we even make this as a t-shirt. Siguro meron na kayong nakitang t-shirt na ganito, no? Fishers of men. But my dear brothers and sisters, let us be reminded today that Jesus used that word not just as a title for the apostles. Jesus did not give titles to the apostles. He did not just give mere names and titles. In fact, to become a fisher of men is a mission. Let us remember this, my dear brothers and sisters. Jesus did not give titles to the apostles. He gave them missions. To become a fisher of men is not just having a title for yourself. 
to become a fisher of men is to be given a mission by our Lord. So my dear brothers and sisters, let us not get stuck with names and titles even in the church. Our names and titles that may be given to us in the church pertain to our mission. Kaya kapag naordinahan kaming pare, nagkakaroon kami ng title. Father. Hindi na lang ako si Kali. I became Father Kali. Minsan nga, naiilang ako kasi ang nanay ko, ang tawag sa akin ay Father. <laughs> Kaya minsan nakakailang, no? Ang nanay ko, tinatawag akong Father. No? When my mother sees me, nagmamano sa akin ang nanay ko. No? Baliktad. Dati ako ang nagmamano sa nanay ko. Ngayon, ang nanay ko ang nagmamano sa akin. No? But, I think I should be careful it may get stuck in my head and I feel superior even to my mother to become a father, Kali, is not having a title for myself. To become a fisher of men is not just a name or a title. It is a mission. We have here religious sisters together with us. I know you have titles at the end of your name. No? Our sisters here from Spain and South America, you have a beautiful title. No? Misioneras del Santísimo Sacramento y María Immaculada. Wow! A beautiful title. But let us not just get stuck with the title. What is the meaning of that? What is my mission as a missionary of the Blessed Sacrament and Mary Immaculate? Remember, my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus did not give titles to the apostles. To become a fisher of men is not just a title you fix with your name. It is a mission. That is why in our first reading today, from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, he said, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news to others. St. Paul, in our first reading, describes what it is to become an apostle to become a follower of Jesus. And it is not having a title. It is about mission. The mission of bringing the good news of Jesus to people. And this does not pertain only to religious men and women, to priests in the church. It is for everyone. Madalas ko ay naa-attract tayo sa mga titles. Yung mga anak natin minsan, no? Sabi natin sa mga anak ninyo, baka sabihin ninyo, pangarap kong magkaroon ng anak na may title na attorney sa harapan. Yan, no? Napakataas na pangarap yan ng isang magulang. O kaya doktor, nakadikit sa pangalan mo. But let us not just get stuck with those titles. You may be a good attorney. You may be a good doctor. But do you perform your mission? To become a lawyer is not just having a title. It is a mission to do good in the world, to defend the poor, to defend the poor against injustice. That is the mission of a lawyer. What is the mission of a doctor? To save lives, not just to amass wealth for myself. To become a doctor is to save the life of another person. My dear brothers and sisters, 
Today, we celebrate the feast of St. Andrew. He was called a fisher of men by Jesus. But let us remember today, it was not meant to be a title. Jesus gave him not a name, not a title. Jesus gave him a mission. Let us pray that in this Mass, we honor our name as Christians, as Catholics. But let us remember the meaning of that name. It is not just a title. Let us celebrate our own mission. Amen. Please stand. Let us now commend our intentions to the care of God the Father with the prayers of St. Andrew. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That our pastors, called by God to be fishers of men, may face the challenge of renewal by preaching the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That missionaries may become effective proclaimers of the gospel by their witness of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those called by our Lord to his service may respond generously to his call. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the Lord may touch the sick, the sorrowing, and the troubled, and those who suffer in mind and body. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That our beloved dead may live in the Lord's peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In silence, let us now pray for our personal intentions and for all the intentions offered in this Mass. Father, as we prepare to celebrate the incarnation of your Son, Grant the prayers we make in union with St. Andrew the Apostle. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, Almighty God, that through these offerings which we bring on the feast day of St. Andrew, we may please you by what we have brought 
and be given life by what you have accepted through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you, Eternal Shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles, watch over it and protect it always, so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end, we acclaim, holy holy holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, 
and Jose, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am I'm not worthy, worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, but, but only say the word, and, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. May communion in your sacrament strengthen us, O Lord, so that by the example of the blessed apostle Andrew, we who carry in our body the death of Christ may merit to live with him in glory, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.